Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and I am joined by the wonderful and very talented Jackie Smith, who is the founder of Coventry Creations, and has also wrote the beautiful book, The Big Book of Candle Magic, which we're going to talk all about. You're going to get to hear all the cool stuff, and we're going to talk a lot about candle magic and why it's important to your craft. So Jackie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited that you're here too. And it's so funny when um, Wiser said, hey, we think you're going to like this book. And I said, okay, cool. And I'm like, I don't really know the author. And they're like, oh, they're the founder of Coventry Creations. And I'm like, the candle company? I've been buying their candles forever. So it's kind of cool because I'm a huge fan of your candles. I'm a huge fan of your company. And now I get to kind of fangirl out over your book. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We've been around for a minute. This is our 30th year. Oh, Coming my goodness. Wow. 30. That is so awesome. And, you know, it's funny because when I first got started in my own witchcraft journey, we had this little itty bitty teeny tiny uh, witchcraft store in my town that carried your candles. And I... I would go in there and I'm like, well, I don't really know how to write my own spells. I don't really know how to do any of this. It's all one and done. Comes attached mm -hmm. with the spell. I can burn the candle and it's good. <laughs> and it was so yeah. great. And they that was, smelled that was so my goal. good. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my goal for these. And you can also add them to a bigger spell yes. too, which is awesome. You can really craft um, your spell and know that this is a great foundation that you can count on. It adds, you can add more stuff to it. You can add more oils and herbs to it, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, you, it's a good foundation for whatever you're going to do. Or like I said, set it and forget it. Well, no, forget it. Never yeah, leave a burning never candle on a burning candle. <laughs> uh, But you can do your spell and um, not have to really, you know, put a whole bunch of time and focus and energy, which you could. But, you know, in today's busy world, sometimes you only have five minutes and you can set your candle to burn in front of you while you're working or whatever you need to do, but you need to do a quick one and done kind of spell. These mm -hmm. candles are ideal for that. And I love that uh, back in the day, I don't even know if you guys still do this because I haven't bought one in a minute. Um, but you guys used to have the little votives that had the spell attached to them and it was just rubber banded to the candle, which was so awesome, <laughs> but it was so yep. easy going. Do you guys still do that? We, we definitely have our uh, votives. They're still, they're still part of our, our um, offerings. Sometimes the stores leave them in the box and sometimes stores will rubber band the little, the little slip that comes with the box of votives on it. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. I absolutely love it. So let's talk about your book. Obviously you've been in the candle making industry and the witchcraft industry for quite some time. Uh, what kind of prompted you to write this book? A lot of it was because we're here we are at our 30th year um, and it's a celebration of those 30 years of, of making candles, ma magical intent candles, intentional candles. And um, I 10 years ago, I did Coventry Magic, which is another book on on magic. It's candles, herbs and oils. And this one, I just wanted to do just candle magic um, and really focus in on all the really cool things you can do with candles. And yep. Yeah, I make a certain style of candle. Absolutely. That's what I do yet. I'm not, you know, I, there's lots of room for many styles of candles. I'm not jealous of any other candles out there. Um, I just know that that candle magic is so awesome because it's, it's one of the few magics that you can do where you can really watch your magic manifest mm -hmm. as that candle burns down or gets consumed Maybe you're going to use a pillar that drips and you're going to see little shapes that, that, you know, form on the sides of your candles, or maybe you're going to look at the wax drippings at the end, or there's so many different things you can do to watch your magic in action. It's just a visceral experience, heaven and earth coming together. I absolutely love that. And it's so true. You know, I, I remember when there was a few times when I would do um, the candle wax divination with the votives, I would actually just let the, it drip into the bowl of water and kind of see what came out of it and kind of infuse the magical energy to kind of figure that out. But I, I have to say out of my, the entirety of your book, which the book is fantastic, everybody. You need to go pick up a copy. It is worth every single penny. I promise you, go buy a copy. I actually got so much out of this and I've been practicing for a long time, but there were still things I'm like, huh, I 
never thought about doing it that way. That's mm. cool. And literally just so great. But I think my favorite chapter was your divination chapter. Oh, cool. And I'm talking about so how you use the tarot and the pendulum and all the different forms of divination to work into your actual candle magic. So do you want to talk a little bit about that uh, and kind of give everybody a, a little preview? Well, I, yes, I love that. I love that piece of, um, I love divination too. So I'm a sucker for that. Candle magic and divination go hand in hand for me. And one of the things that I do when I'm doing magic is I actually ask, is this a good idea? Um, do I, Not only that, is this spell complete? Is this going to get me where I want to go? And so I've, I've built over the years, good relationships with my ancestors and the, and I call them my spiritual court, my spiritual allies and um, different folks that I work with that are on the other side that watch out for me. Mm -hmm. And, and I say, Hey, do I have this right? Is there something I should add? Is there something I should take away? And so there's many different ways that you can go about, um, doing that. And it's not just one way or the other. And and I was fascinated over the years. I've learned many things like how fun is it to just use dice? How, mm -hmm. how cool is that to be able to grab some dice from that Yahtzee game you don't use and, um, and, and then, and use that for divination purposes or, or the three pennies that are sitting in the bottom of your purse or the five pennies that are sitting in the bottom of your purse mm -hmm. and, um, and, and say, okay, is this the, is this the right way? Also, if, if you're doing something big, especially if you're mad, maybe you're doing a little revenge or something, ask first. Before you do something from a, a big emotional state, ask if this is in your highest good, if this is going to work out the way you want it to. Because there's times when I do that, I'm like, oh, I got to get them you know, in my head. <laughs> and, and I will ask, um, is this something that, is this a good idea? And I usually phrase it, I, I'm really careful in how I phrase it to be a yes or no answer. I try not to leave it too open-ended. Um, is this spell that I'm going to cast going to backfire on me? Is this going to get my desired result or of blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I, or am I too emotionally distraught to be affected, effective in this spell? And I, sometimes I get, no. No, you may not. You may not. do not do this spell. And uh, and then and then sometimes I'll ask, well, what if I do it anyway? And oh um, no. And, and uh, you know what would happen if I? And so, okay, I won't do it. But what what did I avoid? And and sometimes I get answers that are like, ooh, I dodged that bullet. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but ask. It's okay to ask. And there's, I mean, you can use tarot, you can use regular, um, uh, different uh, oracles and divination. Like I said, pennies, um, uh, you can use dice. It's just so, it's fun. And, and then pendulums and try out different things. See what you like. I had so much fun playing with the dice. Oh my gosh. Um, I've used dice before and I was, um, I took this class on this this one gal who is teaching us how to throw dice in this wood bowl and it, and it, they talked about where it landed in the bowl and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't retain enough, nor did I have permission to use her teachings in the book. So I, I, um, started looking at do, doing the experiments of, um, what if I just use dice on a cloth and, and I've been playing with that for a while. And using a uh, Dice's divination tool has been going on since there were dice, since there was gambling. Yep. So it was fun just, and I got, it was so accurate because when I was playing, writing this book, I would, I would pull some tarot cards. I would throw the coins and I would um, throw the dice and then I would check with the pendulum and it was insane how much they lined up. It was scary. I love when it's divination does that. It's so exciting to kind of be like, Hey, I'm asking this question. But I'm going to ask it through like five or six divination just to make sure that my guides are all on the same page. Mostly it's just, you know, to make sure that it's not me yeah. influencing it. But, you know, at the same time uh -huh. you ask it and everything lines up and then you're like, oh, well, mm -hmm. that's just statistically impossible that all of that right. would line up properly. Or you use three or four tarot decks and you pull the same cards out of every single deck and you're like, that is statistically impossible. That cannot happen. <laughs> 
what the yeah. heck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it works out. Uh, yes, every it's time. <laughs> crazy. And so when I was when I was testing this theory before as I was writing the book, I said, well, let me just test this. And I did it several times in a row, several days in a row. Not I, I gave myself some rest between. Cause you know, you can you can influence stuff and you can make stuff happen energetically, like you said. I would when I pulled the cards, I would not flip them over. So I pull tarot cards without flipping them over and then I would throw the coins and then I would, and without looking it up and I just wouldn't look at them and then I would do the dice and then I would one by one look at them. So I, the throw wouldn't be influenced by the past results. That's smart. That's really and, smart. And, and so then I would look, so I, I toss the coins and then I wouldn't look at them and then I toss the dice. And then I would do the, without looking at them, and then I would use the pendulum. Because the pendulum, you got to look at. So that was the last thing I would do. And then I would do the pendulum, get the answer, and then I would move backwards. And then the tarot would say exactly what everyone else said, which was kind of insane. So many days in a row, I got the same, same, same. That is so awesome. And, and you know, that's a really very valid thing that we do a lot of times when we're playing with terror and stuff like that we will flip the card over and go oh my you got the devil oh my you got the tower oh my you got this <laughs> and then you flip the next one you're like oh wow yeah you, you get the you know nine of swords over here are you okay like are you good and then the whole <laughs> reading is influenced because of that one card and the associations with that card so i yeah. really like i think i might actually implement that now I just pull them all and then be like okay now we're gonna flip them all because they can't be influenced by anything <laughs> right 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 and i i love um i use tarot and magic a lot too my candle spells mm -hmm. so um i will and actually when i'm doing a tarot reading whether it's for myself or someone else sometimes if we don't like the outcome i don't i think that i fully believe this is my belief system so you don't like what's happening change it let's change it so and i will pull other cards out of the deck during a reading and or at the end of the reading and say okay we're gonna we're gonna cross this energy with this or we're gonna do this or and then we'll set up a spell and i'll have the client take a picture of it and um and then okay go home and get pull these cards out of your own deck or go get a deck pull these cards out put this candle in the middle of it and and build this energy to um erase or counter um the um the other energy in your life it's great. It works really, really well. That is you're super that, cool. If you're having like some bad luck or some bad health, um, you there's because a tarot is just a big storyboard, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so you pull out the if you know tarot, pull out the cards that represent. Maybe it's just that maybe all you need is the tower card. My life is falling <laughs> apart. Um, oh, <laughs> and you pull pull out the cards that represent how you feel about the situation and maybe the people and the players. And then, and then you pull out the cards of the result that you want, the change that you want, and you cover it with that. And then, and then you um, can use like a, a change candle. I have a candle called needed change mm -hmm. um, and, or, or other stuff. Maybe it's a spiritual cleansing. Maybe it's a reversing. Maybe it's whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, maybe it's a success. Think about um, like, let yourself kind of get really creative. Maybe it's, you're going to get um, a black to white candle. So you're going to change it that way, or you're going to get uh, maybe um, a pink magenta red candle. It's just like watch something change and, and you're just going to get three colors of candles and you're going to let this one burn that one. So you have this, you're, you're experiencing that change. Um, so you're going to step through the process. I love stepped spells because it can see how interactive that is. Mm -hmm. Like, like maybe I'm, um, being um not as aggressive about something or not maybe not verbal about something that I need to be and I need to be more aggressive on on um speaking my truth so I might say grab a a a, a really light blue votive or chime candle and then I'll grab maybe a green vo chime candle and then I'll grab a dark blue chime candle and so the first day I'm going to light that and I'll have my tarot laid out of being more vocal. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it's maybe it's I'm the um, the queen of swords. So she always says what she wants to say, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> and and so I'll first first day I'll light that 
really light blue candle that says, well, I'm not really speaking my truth too much. I'm being a, a, a like, like my uh, throat chakra is a little light. And then um, I'll light the green candle to kind of help my heart get a little, my, my emotions get a little stronger. And then the third day, I'll light that dark blue candle, which really kind of opens up that, my personal truth. You know, I'm just, I'm playing in this, mm-hmm. in this exact moment, but yes. <laughs> I love these little step things. And because the chime candles are great for stepped spells like that, because you're very interactive. You're very, you're doing things specifically because they're short, boom, you're done in a couple mm-hmm. of hours. And then you can do the next one and the next one. So they're really great for that to be very interactive. That is a really great way to do that too. Um, you know, kind of playing off of it, you know, ways to direct and change your energy as well and using the tarot. Uh, one time I was just not having a great life moment as we often do. And <laughs> so I took my tower card and I pointed it upward at the top of my altar and I put a quartz uh, point on it and I pointed it away from me and I basically put in this energy that I'm like all this tower energy that I'm dealing with I am sending it out to the universe to deal with because I'm done I don't want to do it anymore okay uh, we're done and so surprisingly enough you know as sometimes you'll have those moments where you're like I don't know how well this is going to work because you're playing with it and um I really like in your book how you said that you know there's no such thing as a spell going wrong it's just a learning experience Mm -hmm. and this was one of those moments of I don't know if this is going to work or if it's going to back it worked so well it was disturbing it kind of scared me I was like oh shit wow that works so well okay yes Um, the render is surrender is so powerful Mm -hmm. the some of my most magical powerful moments was when i surrendered the outcome i surrendered trying to control it trying to contain it trying to be strong all that i just surrendered i'm like that's it i've had enough if you want me to be happy then make, you know, just like the whole thing, having that, having the temper tantrum, I, I'm not fighting anymore, but how, how amazing when you give up that fight, because sometimes that fight stops you from really fully embracing the energy that's already around you. Cause you're so used to fighting mm-hmm. that you're not allowing the magic that you're manifesting to enter and actualize. It's true. Yeah, you you know, and there's a lot of times that you could almost be your own hindrance with your magic and having that kind of energy where you're just like, I keep doing the spell, but nothing seems to be working. Have you checked on you? That's Mm -hmm. a good question. Truthfully, because a lot of times we'll be like, well, I'm trying, I'm doing the thing. I've got the job. I'm trying to bring the money in. I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that, but nothing seems to be working. And you get so frustrated and you get so angry and you're Mm -hmm. just, you get really angry at the universe and your guides and your deities and everybody. And you're like, why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you doing something? And it's like, have you checked to see if you're the problem? Yeah. And it's sometimes that's the case. And of course, nobody likes to admit that they're the problem. Nobody wants to admit that they're the drama. Nobody wants to do that. But sometimes we, as practitioners, we do have to really check in on ourselves and be like, is it me? Am I the one holding everything back? Taking your own inventory, (laughs) as it were. So what is, so I have have a question for you. Yes, of course. What is your favorite way of getting past that magically? Um. A lot of times, if I'm the drama, if I'm the problem, and I'm the one who's in my own way, I literally have to kind of go through and do almost a full inventory of me. And that might sound really confusing or even really daunting to those who are listening, but it's kind of a little bit of a cross between shadow work and also uh, just really kind of tuning into you. Uh, Mm -hmm. As somebody who's neurodivergent, I often will get very overwhelmed very easily and I will not realize why I'm overwhelmed, but I get very upset because of the fact that I can hear everything, the world is not playing nice, just everything feels wrong, and I don't know what the initial cause was. So I have to retrace all those steps and go, oh, it was this, that's the problem. 
And in magic, mm-hmm. I have to kind of do the same kind of thing. I have to retrace all of the parts of me and go, you're angry about this. And this is what you're holding on to. And you're trying so hard to fix this one problem, but you have no control over it. You need yeah. to just let go. And it takes a minute. And it's not something that you can be like, oh, I'm just going to check in an hour later. You know the problem. It might take months for you to figure out. And that's the thing. You have to kind of check in. And I tried to do like a weekly check in once I started doing this because now I'm like, okay, I need to make sure all all the stuff is there. Am I holding on to stuff that's good for me? Am I holding on to things that are appropriate? Um, Mm -hmm. If not, I need to figure out how to let that go. And sometimes, yeah, like let's say, for example, let's say that you are dealing with an individual who is just not the greatest person to have in your life. We're not talking like, you know, full-blown narcissist or anything like that. We're just talking like a person that's not really good for you. They, when mm-hmm. you're around them, they don't really make you feel great. You feel like you're constantly competing or anything like that. Any kind of those individuals that just really aren't good for you, you kind of need to take a step and go, why am I hanging around this person? Yeah. Am I afraid to be alone? Like, am I afraid to lose a friendship? Am I afraid to lose a relationship with it? Is it, you know, this, if it's, let's say, say it's your boss, if, is this job right for you? And sometimes you have to ask yourself those hard questions. And sometimes the best way to fix the problem is to walk away. Yeah. Those are, those are really um, good, hard questions. Those mm-hmm. are, that is so much a part of magic that um, r- magical practitioners who are looking to heal what's going on. So, so to me, magic is the same thing as healing mm-hmm. when you are looking to transform your life. Sure, there's absolutely Band-Aid magic is what I call it, where you know, you're going to light a quick candle to get a date or money or just <laughs> whatever, resolve a yeah. quick issue. We, we all <laughs> do that. We all need that at times. I love to use magic um, to heal the thing that I always need to band-aid. Because mm-hmm. if you have a need for magic, then there's something that needs to be addressed or healed. I think that's a very accurate statement. And, you know, I don't know if you've heard this term, but uh, I heard somebody say that witchcraft is essentially just spicy psychology. <laughs> and which is pretty true because we're all out here trying to transmute or, you know, basically use magic to improve our lives in some way, mm-hmm. shape or form. And that's essentially what psychology does. It just tries to improve your mental health. And yeah. so, yeah, witchcraft is spicy oh, psychology. <laughs> it is. It is. I am. I, I blend that that psychology. Um, you can even call it pop psychology with with a um, magical practice because the two for me go hand in hand. It's um, you can't, for me, I can't have one without the other. Mm-hmm. I really need to understand why I'm doing the things the way I'm doing it, or maybe why um, way back in the day, this spell started out this way. Why? Or and so most of the spells that we do um, it's so cute when they call this low magic, but um but this folk magic, candle magic is folk magic. Mm-hmm. It it is, and folk magic is when you take the stuff that's around you, you throw open your cupboards and pull open your junk drawer, and you look and see what you have, and build a spell with that. That's considered folk magic. You know, um, so high magic it makes me laugh when they call this low magic, and I'm like, well, this is the stuff that works and works fast. <laughs> and high magic is is the stuff that the more ceremonial where mm-hmm. you're going to write it out and memorize it and do the real specific things in the specific ways. And, and that's all well and good. I'm, I'm not going to begrudge anyone doing any, any of the high magic stuff that they do. It's not my taste. It doesn't bring me joy and it brings many, many people joy. So rock on, rock on with your high magic self. So this, this uh, folk magic really ties in with that um, mental and emotional response to things. It, to me, it's very tied in with psychology and even like going back in the day of the, um, the similarities of things, the, um, that those, those signatures of like, well, why did they call five finger grass, five finger grass? Cause it looks like it have five fingers, you mm-hmm. know, things like that. Um, uh, why does mandrake root called mandrake root? Cause it looks like a man, um, that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, so those kind of things, and then it, then it really speaks to how you use it. Um, 
that's all of that folk magic. And so that 100% lends itself to psychology. And, and if you look at uh, even Jung, he was raised by a spiritualist and a Kabbalist. So he was raised with these magical principles to get, get his psychological principles. So um, even Maslow, he studied with native tribes, First mm-hmm. Nations tribes, to get his um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it's full circle. So the, these magical principles, I mean, so the psychological principles came from early magical practices or, or shamanic practices and these folk magic practices. And um, if we go back in history, the shamans, the wise women, the folks in the middle of the woods mm-hmm. doing their folk magic stuff, they're who you went to and they counseled as much as they built spells for you. And those spells are very psychological at the same time. So I'm, that spicy psychology is magic, 1000%. And that's the first part of the big book of candle magic is going right into that mm-hmm. magical psychology of why, why do you need this? And, and how do you start filling those gaps in your life and filling those deficiencies or healing those deficiencies and, and get to really effective candle spells? It's very true. And it, I do like that you mentioned all of that in your book as well, because I think it a lot of times as magical practic- practitioners, uh, we forget that we have to take care of our needs. And that's why we're trying to do the prosperity spells, because we all got to pay our bills. You know, we got to make sure that we got food on our table, a roof over our head. And, you know, that's all prosperity stuff. And then, you know, you also want to make sure that wherever you are, that you're, you know, cultivating the good energy so you get your happy home kind of stuff which you know it, it's so funny thinking back to the happy home candles that y- you guys make um which were one of my favorite ones to put on my kitchen altar forever uh Love until it. i kind of started working with my own and so they were absolutely my favorite things i would light a candle and then you know if my home needed some good cleansing i would revert back to those folk magic practices which Interestingly enough, my grandmother was not a witch, but I swear that she was raised by one because of the fact that everything she did was what we would classify as witchcraft now. Um, (laughs) She just said it was tradition. And I'm like, huh, okay. But one of her favorite things to do was if the home felt off, she would go make two loaves of bread. And you can make as many as you'd like, but she'd do two. One she would feed to the birds. She would put it outside for the animals. And that was the one that absorbed all the ickiness in the house when you first made it. And the second one was to bring the goodness and comfort and love and good feelings of everything into the house when it baked. And truth be told, there is nothing that smells better in the house besides cinnamon rolls and fresh baked bread. Right. Oh, just, just, I can smell it. Just you (laughs) describing that, I can smell fresh baked bread Mm -hmm. and I can have, I'm having that reaction of like, of, of the joy that that brings. And hopefully everyone who's listening has had the joy, (laughs) excuse me, of walking into a house that has fresh baked bread. Yes. And honestly, if you've never made fresh baked bread in your house, you're like, oh, it's too much work or it's too hard or I'm terrible at baking there's actually some really easy bread recipes out there most of them are called peasant breads uh Mm. they're ridiculously easy and you don't need a whole lot of like actual bread knowledge to make them so if you want to try them i recommend those and if you don't even want to do that go to the freezer section oh yes frozen (laughs) uncooked loaves that you put on the cookie sheet and you let them defrost and rise and you bake them and you have fresh baked bread it's true Absolutely. And if you're someone that's like, well, I don't really want a whole loaf because I live by myself, bake biscuits. It works just yeah. the same. Oh, yeah. Absolutely or, or the same. That frozen loaf in half. There you go. All that. It works. It's mm-hmm. so, so easy to do this. And you know, There's, um, these things. Or are... share the loaf. Yeah, share the loaf. Yes. Biggest, the biggest, one of the best spells you can do is to share something with someone where you keep part and you share the rest. Mm hmm. That's a, that's a, um, that, do you know that that is some of the original prosperity spells sharing? Yep. It, what it says to you in the universe is I have more than enough. And when you are standing in the belief and the understanding that you have more than enough, 
and you're sharing with someone else, then the universe says, oh, guess what? You have more than enough. I will maintain that because what we believe we manifest. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's just good nature stuff. And this is something that I always encourage anybody who's a magical practitioner to try to just be a good human. Mm -hmm. Be a good human. And if you bake something, bake some for your neighbors. Next door neighbors will probably thank you. Hopefully they will. Hopefully they're good people too. But, you know, in today's world, kindness goes a lot farther than you think it would. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. You know, uh, the other one of my other favorite magics I do is, and I do combine this with candle magic quite a bit. And actually, I do this on a daily basis. One of the first things I do every day is I state my gratitude Mm -hmm. um, as I light my candle for the day. And um, that puts me in a place of um, of abundance, of love, abundance of self. Um, Gratitude is hugely magic. And I've been doing the gratitude magic since before it got popular. Um, (laughs) So, and I'm not saying that to, to say, oh, Uh, look at me, I'm better than everyone else. But to say, I've been doing this for such a long time. I understand now why it's gotten really popular. It's super important. When uh, And I forgot about gratitude for a while and I became very miserable and very poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if your gratitude is that you are breathing oxygen, you're breathing. I woke up today and I am taking a breath, which... um, is there's, you know, especially during, it actually was my big gratitude during the early days of COVID because so many people were, that was, because I, I did have COVID. So that mm-hmm. was really easy to be grateful that I could take a deep breath without coughing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so that became a huge piece of gratitude for me um, as I was recovering. Uh, but but like those are simple things that the the sun is shining or that it's raining today. And now I take the thing that is challenging me the most And I, and I'm grateful for it. Like, I'm so grateful that I'm being challenged with blah, blah, blah today, because I know that I am going to learn something and I know that I'm going to be stronger for it. Um, And it's amazing how, when I do that, when I stop and take a moment and say, I'm really grateful for this challenge. um, I tend to work it out faster or an answer comes to me or support comes to me. It's so true. I mean, honestly, like there's a lot of times that I will have to kind of remind myself to do the gratitude thing, though, especially on the days where I'm like, I don't feel good. I'm not happy today. My body hates me. My brain hates (laughs) me. I'm not happy. And then it's like, but you were able to get up and walk today. Which is actually a big feat. Many of my listeners know that I have multiple sclerosis. And so sometimes getting up to be able to like have the legs work properly wow. is quite the feat. Um, and so it's one of those things that, you know, remembering to just be like, thank you for letting the legs work today. Nothing else works, but I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful yes. that I don't have to do anything else except walk today. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. I it's gratitude is a line in my planner. It's it's um you know you, as you're planning my day as I plan my day or whatever, and, um it's literally the the one of the first things I do. I open up my planner to my page. I set the date. And I find my gratitude. There was a uh, episode that I've done for my show gosh, probably at the very beginning, which so many people have loved, uh, which was, you know, your favorite daily magic kind of practice. And obviously your sounds like it's one of your gratitude things. Do you have any other favorite daily kind of magics that you just do every day that are just a part of your routine? I say hello to as many people as I can. I, I come in and I walk through um, our place. We have a, a 10,000 square foot factory mm-hmm. where we make all of our candles. And, and I have many altars here to maintain our sacred space. But the big part of maintaining our sacred space is I walk through and I say good morning and hello to everyone. And that's honestly a big part of my magical practice mm-hmm. because it, it um, gets me connected with the magic that's here of the work that we're doing it keeps me humble because I can't do this without everyone who works here. Mm-hmm. I am nothing without this entire team. I'm just somebody with some ideas. 
And um, that the ideas are easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ideas are like Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. So, um, so it's, it's our, the team that, that is the facilitators of all those ideas that saying hello and then being, um, finding something joyful in, in the people I meet on a daily basis. Um, part of, um, uh, when I like, I'm going to the, I went to the market and the woman who was checking me out at the market today, um, I just, she was just whatever was about her. I, I said, wow, you just are really glowing today. Thank you so much for making my day brighter. And she just looked at me like, what? <laughs> like, oh my God. And she was really touched, but it was like, I look for things in people to remind them that they are magical. And that mm -hmm. becomes a huge part of my own wild magic. Um, it, it just, I love, I love inciting those feelings in other people. And then it's incited in me naturally mm -hmm. at that point, it just grows around me. So that those are the two things that finding my gratitude. And then as I find my gratitude, I can, I can find, I can be grateful for things in other people because I so easily find, um, to do the training of my, of my mother, who is a very negative person. Mm -hmm. And I, we would walk down the street and she would point out all the negative things about people mm -hmm. and she would point out all the negative things about me. And so I grew up finding all the negativity in people like, wow, look at that. La, 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 la. So this was a retraining of, um, it's so easy to find negativity everywhere. So I flipped that to finding positivity and that helps me stay in a place of, of gratitude as much as possible. Cause finding negativity, I don't have to work hard at that. It just finds me. You know, that's something that I think, especially as crazy as the world is right now, um, there's a lot of negative out there. So it is really easy to just kind of sink into that negative and just be like, I don't want to deal with the world today. The world is yucky. There's this going on. There's that going on. I don't want to touch it. And I think that we forget that there's also a lot of good out there, too, because mm -hmm. the negative shines so much brighter and it's so much louder and you know the positive stuff might be small it might just be that little candle glowing in the window but it's that little candle glowing in the window that makes you smile it you know and it's not false positivity i mean there's days when i'm mm -hmm. i'm just not okay yeah and when i'm not okay i say hey i'm i'm having a not okay day but because i'm there for people and because i look for the positivity and other people, if I then am honest with the people around me and saying, I'm not okay today, it's, it's kind of like um, a call to arms. <laughs> it's like, that's so I'm awesome. Not, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying it happens all the time. Sometimes I'm not okay. And I don't tell anybody mm -hmm. and I'm just, just going to be not okay by myself. And, and I think that's really a valid um, place to just to, just to sit in the funk, sit in the mm -hmm. suck for a second, um, sitting in a, I just call it sitting in the sock because it reminds you of uh, we grow. I think we grow in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't stay in positivity all the time. It's just a big part of my magic. I um, mean, and that's completely valid. That is totally valid to be, you know, to also because magic is also about balance. You can't mm -hmm. just be all light and positive all the time because then you're ignoring sometimes some suffering that's happening around you and you're just like no i'm not gonna see it because i'm gonna be a happy person there yeah. are a lot of people that choose that mindset not to say that you're bad individuals we're just saying that you have to have the balance you have to be well, like it's okay to be both well if you think about it plants don't grow in the light mm -hmm. generally i know there's exceptions to the rule i don't want to know about it um, <laughs> but in in general terms plants grow in the dark. Mm -hmm. So we don't grow from, um, we don't grow from constant success. We grow from the times that, um, we, um, we fail or we are struggling. Mm -hmm. It's true. That's where we grow. It is very true. So, you know, it's such an amazing experience to kind of think about all the different ways that, you know, magic can touch our lives because, you know, there's a lot of times out there that when you look at magic, especially if you're somebody who's new to magic, you, you think, oh, well, I just have to have this set time, the set space. I have to do this thing on the moon and I have to do this thing on the Sabbath and I have to do. No, 
<laughs> just know <laughs> it is every day all day long as much as you want or as much as you li as little as you want but it mm -hmm. can be a part of every aspect of your life and you know on the show we always talk about how uh your magic is your way you know obviously jackie's mm -hmm. ma magic is not my way we have similarities yes but it's not my way my magic is not going to be her way and that's okay your magic is your way and that's the best way to be i love that sentiment that's what if there's one thing that i would love for people to take out away from my book is that you get to be the decider of your own magic mm -hmm. you um, challenge the status quo of what um seems normal to you and find out what works for you find out if if green is really the color of prosperity for you might be purple. It might not be. <laughs> right? Yeah, it might be purple. It might be, it might be, you know, the, uh, bright red or pink. You know, whatever your color, it's, that's the thing though. Some people don't see colors exactly the same. And this is scientific that what some person sees as lime green, somebody else sees as a different color of green. Exactly. Because their brain interprets it differently. In the big book of candle magic, I have a section on colors. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I talk about in the book, it's a big deal, is that um, we have um, five different branches of magic, prosperity, protection, um, love, mm -hmm. healing, and clearing. So everything that we do, um, you're going to go in one of those five directions in whatever spell you're doing. So I took every aspect of your spell from color to herbs and oil, to the maybe tarot that you're using in there, or the moon that you're, maybe the moon, that the, the sign that the moon is in, et cetera. And how could you use that item in any one of those five directions? So my section on color shows you how to use pink for prosperity, how to use purple <laughs> for, for protection, how to use pink for protection. You know, you don't think about how you can use it because maybe all you have in your hand is a pink candle. Mm -hmm. And you need a protection spell. So how do you use pink for protection? Well, and, and this is my idea of how you can use pink for protection. And, um, and it's okay if that inspires you to something different. That's my hope. I think that I that's hope. so valid and so beautiful. And I love that too, because, you know, and even how you also broke down in your uh, book all the different types of candles and what you could use them for or why you could use them if you want to make your spell teeny tiny from a birthday candle all the way to extravagant to a seven day candle and everything in between there's so many ways that we can do that and I love the fact that it's not a set in stone this color has to match this intention and it's it's your magic your way I mm -hmm. love it I love it it's so beautiful Absolutely. Uh, and um, magic is very um, mutable and moldable. Mm -hmm. um, think about any, there's a couple of different herbs that have like a million different uses. Frankincense is one of them. Patchouli is another. Um, lavender is another. Depending mm -hmm. on what book you read is what you use it for. And um, somebody had to decide that frankincense is good for prosperity <laughs> and for exorcism. Yes. <laughs> The patchouli is good for repelling and attracting, you know, depending on what book you're reading. So um, be the decider of this. How does this, how does this herb or oil or color vibrate for you? How does it feel for you for this spell also? So it might work like, like that patchouli might work as a repellent in this spell, but it might work as an attractant in this spell. Mm -hmm. So it's tuning in to the spirit of each one of your ingredients and how does it want to work for this? And you can use your pendulum or your divination tools with each ingredient too. Um, there's times when like, oh, this, this just doesn't feel right. I will, before I blend ingredients, I'll lay them out. I'll put, you know, sometimes it's just a paper plate and I'll put little dribs and drabs on a paper plate and say, okay, does this feel, does this feel good? And like maybe one of them doesn't and then I'll just take it off. I'm like, okay, this feels better. So sometimes I just pull stuff on and off and I'm like, well, that's so weird that, you know, this 
Prosperity Spell does not want Basil. Basil's <laughs> my go-to. Why not? Oh, because it needs, because this Prosperity Spell is not about the Basil energy. It's about, you know, this energy over here. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, that, you know, it kind of goes back to what you said, it, you know, even at the very start of your book of, you know, just play with it, experiment and see what works best for you. Truthfully, there are some things that I use as far as like herbs and stuff goes. Like, for example, I use peppermint in protection and a lot of people yes. are like well hey you know that could be but it's probably not it's more prosperity energy and i'm like yeah but it's also spicy and it can burn you if you get enough of it and you know like i if i'm trying to put some protection energy out there and i obviously want to ward something away I might throw some of that in there with some black pepper and turn this whole shebang into super spicy. Why? Because it deters things. It, some people don't like it. Some energies don't like it. Some animals don't like it. It's too strong for them. It's too potent. They don't like the way it makes their nose cold and their mouth cold and just, no, they don't like it. So I throw that in there. And then sometimes I'll do the same thing and be like, hey, I want to throw some spearmint into this prosperity blend over here. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, it works. It totally is fine. Why? Because it's spicy and I want to attract all that great spicy energy. That's why. Yep. Just use what I, feels right to you. I use peppermint in clearing and protection all the time. P.S. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> and um, because it, it's a very clearing. I well, So I use peppermint personally, personal opinion, personal choice. When I need to clear stuff like mm -hmm. items that like um like a couch or a desk or you know like i i use peppermint over anything else it, i find that it works really good on objects yes it does and, um, and then it yes it, it works great for for prosperity and i think it works great for prosperity because it clears your mind mm -hmm. very good at clearing um obsessive thoughts and if we can clear our obsessive thoughts and worries about prosperity issues or love issues, boy, that stuff just, it just changes the game. Like, like stop worrying about it, let it go. And then when, once you let it go, um, surrender it as it were, as we talked about it full circle, suddenly things just start working out. It's funny that you're talking about this. And I think to one of my like favorite kind of clearing blends, um especially if you have those obsessive thoughts and those intrusive thoughts and my favorite blend is peppermint uh or spearmint so that i can use either one depends on what i have in stock and mm -hmm. lavender and rosemary that's like oh, one yes. of my favorite blends for kind of clearing out those intrusive thoughts and kind of cleansing away especially stagnant energy you know if you ever mm -hmm. have that stagnant energy that you're just like i don't like it it feels stuffy and everything just is yucky and i don't want to deal with it create yes. like a room spray or even just like a powder to like sprinkle over everything trust me it works wonders i think <laughs> i think rosemary has got it, it i don't think i know rosemary's in my top five mm -hmm. and then um i love cypress for that same thing so oh, yes. cypress is amazing with grief and um i think people don't realize they're grieving mm-hmm I think we grieve a lot of things and um, we think grief is just for, you know, when, when grandma Hildy died, you know, and, and um, we're, we're going to grieve that. And we have four days cause that's how much time we're allowed off of work. And then we have to get our <laughs> poop in a group and move on. <laughs> Such um, <a> great statement. <laughs> but, but that's not what grief is. Grief is um, grief is so much more complex than all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think we grieve things like, the best example I have for you is is back in 2014 in Michigan, we had a huge flood. We got a month's worth of rain in an hour. Oh, my God. And I got four feet of water in my basement. And in my basement, I have I, ha I had um, like a little en suite with a bathroom. And I had a, a walk-in closet where I got ready. And I had this beautiful little setup for myself in a finished basement. So all of my clothes makeup, hair, all of my identity 
Aww. was in the basement and it was under four feet of water. And, um, and it was, it was poop water. So I didn't want it back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, would want brushes. I don't know if I would want flood water back to begin with, let alone any other kind of water, but still, you know, it, oh, wow, that's so, so sad. So some of my clothes were able to get saved because they had some lovely friends who um, sanitize, washed and sanitized uh, some of my clothes. Some of my clothes, I'm like, no, it's not going on my body. Um, but I did not realize how much grief I was in mm -hmm. over that. I... Um, you know, I just, I got some, some makeup. I got a hairbrush. I got a few things. Um, I wore the equivalent of pajamas for six months. I wore leggings and tunics for six months. And this, and that was, so that was in the summer. And then I went through the winter, just like pajamas, <laughs> comfort clothes. And then spring came and I felt better. And then I was, and I realized I had nothing to wear. I had nothing. And it was all like browns and grays. And, um, and then I started coming out of grief and I was like, I didn't realize how hard I was grieving this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just like one of my best examples of grief. You don't realize you're going through. And, um, so when I realized that I was still processing grief as I started using the Cypress, um, to help lift that grief. Cause yeah, I, I got over, part of me got over the fact that I lost all of my clothes and I lost all my jewelry too. And it mm -hmm. was just crazy. Um, cause I had a lot of wood jewelry and stuff and it didn't survive. And so I started using the Cypress to help lift the grief cause it grief is very heavy. So it can hang out in your aura. Mm -hmm. So you might, you might be processing the grief and then it just like falls on you still. So Cypress helps lift it away. Like, like yes. you're processing it, but it hangs out, hangs out like it's still going to be a party. And, uh, and you're like, no, the party's over. Go home, <laughs> go home get away. <laughs> so, so Cypress is the go home. The party's over to all of your, to that grief. It was um, just, the shift was amazing. I think that that's a really valid thing to kind of talk about as well. The fact that grief comes in many forms and, it, you know, we in society are told Oh, you can only grieve over somebody that's died or a breakup. That's it. Like, you can't grieve over anything else. That, that's mm -hmm. not socially acceptable. But truthfully, grieving over the loss of something, whether it be a home, clothing, yes, these things are big. But even something like your favorite bracelet broke. The mm -hmm. bracelet that you have worn for 20 years because, you know, wherever you got it, you know, your mom gave it to you, your dad, gave it to you, whatever it may be, that you've mm -hmm. had for 20 years suddenly breaks. You're allowed to be in, in grief over that. You're allowed to be mm -hmm. upset by that. You're allowed to cry over that. You're allowed to have emotion and things like that. And I love how we've, you know, kind of brought this full circle about, you know, surrendering to it as well. That and acknowledging that we're going through something that's really, really powerful. And I do like Cypress. Cypress is a really great one for grief. Um, another one that is really great, too, if you're, you know, going through some stuff that you just don't really know how to process is ginger. Oh, yeah. Ginger is yeah. beautiful for that. Uh, the other thing, too, is grief can store in organs like your liver. Um, so yep. if you're looking for something to kind of also help with that, this isn't medical advice just for the record. This is just, you know, a, a energetic kind of thing. Energy can store in all parts of our body. Um, I find that grief and anger like to sit in my liver. And so... I, I will notice that because my liver gets a little sluggish and I feel kind of crappy and all this. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'll, you know, eat some ginger, use some ginger essential oil or something like that. And it will start to kind of help move out that energy in a specific way. So again, this is not medical advice. This isn't, you know, we're talking about energy centers. That's all mm -hmm. we're talking about. Not the actual physical body itself. Right. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm so glad you said that, Brittany, because I'm, um, in, in my own personal journey, I'm a little stalled in, in some of my stuff in my own personal journey. And you just reminded me, so I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm like my, all suddenly all my joints hurt. I'm doing all the right stuff. And, I, and I'm like, oh, I've been making um, some big body changes for myself mm -hmm. and um, letting go of a lot of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm to that. I'm to the next layer. Mm-hmm. 
I'm to the next layer and I'm like, oh, that you just reminded me that I'm personally. So I, I, I'm with you 100% that we <laughs> store stuff inside our body, uh, yes. energetic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we're and making changes in our body, uh, whatever it is, you, you have, I, per, I have to deal with what's being released. Mm -hmm. If I don't deal with what's being released, then I, I go back, I, I reverse that change. So there's a place for, for that energy emotion to live. Yes. It's true. And that kind of brings us full circle to the back of, to the beginning of our conversation that magic is all about alchemy and it's active and it's mm -hmm. you're constantly transmuting things in your life to get better outcomes. It's the same with energies that you might have absorbed or energies that you have created that kind of have taken up resonance in your body. When we talk about cleansing, you're just like, oh, I'm going to cleanse from all of the icky that's out in, you know, the energetic world. And it's like, but we also can create that ick. Mm. so we're masters we are masters, we are of masters that. At it. <laughs> make sure you are also cleansing of your own kind of thing and remembering that your energy that you're creating isn't also sending out you know obviously i know we're human and we get angry and we do all these things but you're not intentionally sending out a lot of energy to just be a terrible human if mm -hmm. you're doing it to protect yourself that's a whole nother conversation Hexing is valid. We can talk about that all day long, but we're almost out of time. So we're going to wrap here. If you guys want to hear more from Jackie, Jackie, you're always welcome to come back by the show anytime. Uh, but be fun. tell me, tell everybody where they can find your books, your Oracle deck, uh, decks. I don't know if you have more than one, you might, um, but I only know mm -hmm. the one because I read about it in your book and uh, where they can find all your stuff and how they can buy your candles because they're beautiful candles, everyone. So thank you. Do your spiel. <laughs> well, you can find um, me and all ways to get to me at CoventryCreations.com. That's C-O-V e-n-t-r-y creations.com and i'm on all the socials if you look up coventry creations or coventry candles and any social you're gonna find me it's easier to find me that way than looking up my name because there's a lot of jackie smiths in the world <laughs> um the big book of candle magic is available on coventry creations it's on amazon and barnes and noble and through many retailers around the country i love 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 my local retailers that have the coventry creations products I encourage everyone to shop local, find your favorite spiritual supply store. If the Coventry Creations candles aren't in there, ask for them and they can get them for you. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite thing. I love working with the stores and supporting local shopping. It is a wonderful way uh, to not only support your local businesses, but also to you know, just kind of buff up your magical supplies. And obviously, if you're somebody out there that's like, oh, well, I can't afford the really pretty candles, that's perfectly fine. If you can get a copy of Jackie's book, she will tell you everything that you need to do to take a very basic candle that you bought for 97 cents at Walmart to turn it into something absolutely magical. You can do it with any kind of candle that you've got. She talks all about it in her book. Everybody go buy a copy. I promise you, you're going to love it. Jackie, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. It was such a great time. You're going to have to come back by. We're going to have to talk more. And Anytime. everyone, take care of yourselves. Be good to yourselves. And I will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.